Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. Welcome to Monday Magic Intuitive Energy Reading, where I give my take on what is being experienced energetically right now so that you know you are not alone because many of times we are all experiencing something similar yet different. Merry Christmas post-Christmas, the Monday after Christmas, we survived the solstice, a Capricorn new moon, and the Christmas holiday. So how are you feeling? I don't know if you can tell, but I am just a smidge under the weather. We have had at least one sick person in our house for the last two months straight. So it has been interesting. And so it is always challenging to really tap into what is the energy presenting versus what am I experiencing personally? So I really try to tap in and get that guidance as to what is collective energy, not just personal energy, but you never know how that may come through. So I personally have noticed, of course, with the the holiday season and all of the things that they say we should do to you know, put on a, a good holiday event for our children, for our family, that it can create distraction. It can be very distracting and it can cause a bit of a feeling of sort of disconnection. And for me, I really felt that that was almost a misalignment, that the hustle and the bustle, um, it, it caused that, you know, to be disconnected from source, to, to be so distracted in the material realm can really feel like a misalignment, right? And it causes a sense of sort of feeling off kilter. It also causes, at least for me personally, a sense of um, fatigue, exhaustion, right? The source is our, our source of life. It's our, our, our prana, right? Our life energy force. And so when we are disconnected in that way, it can be very tiring and very exhausting. There's also been a theme of very disrupted sleep over the last couple of days, Many people are are struggling to sleep through the night, waking many times, having sort of a fitful sleep. Um, I personally have experienced this multiple times in the last week or so. And it's almost as if there's an agitated energy. And I say that from an energetic standpoint, not as if I have felt agitated, um, but that the energy is agitating, especially at night while trying to sleep. And it can feel like um, and I, I know this sounds strange, but this is what's coming through. So I really have to, to share it a high level of inflammation, right? If you think about what happens in the body, when we ingest something that is not good for the body, the body, the cells get agitated, right? There's, there's a disruption in the field, right? And so they, they become, um, a activated and they go out and they, create inflammation to pull the toxin away from the cells, from the vital organs. And it's, it's almost as if this agitation in the energy has created inflammation in the body, that there is um, something the body is, is processing and, and, and that's part of, or connected to this fitful sleep. And so I, you know, I love Christmas. I love, you know, the family time. I love the squeals of the children that are happy, um, but I'm also very happy to be on the other side of Christmas. And it is a time where I feel that uh, we can finally realign. We can finally regroup, ground, center. Hydration is a, a strong key right now that in our distraction, in our hustle and bustle, in our rushing, we can, you know, grab food on the go or, you know, grab something other than uh, a water, maybe a coffee, which is dehydrating, right? The, the holiday treats, the high levels of sugar, um, you know, alcohol, whatever is in your, your tradition, right, can be taxing on the body. And so hydration was a, a strong recommendation that came through, right? So let's if you can put your feet on the ground, if not put your feet on a grounding pad, get some grounding sheets for your bed. Um, you know, at the very least, if you can't do those things, certainly a grounding meditation can be helpful, but really ground back into and, and know that physical feet on the ground is so critically important because mother earth pulls that excess energy from our body, reduces inflammation, helps to bring us back online to heal, to grow. Um, <clears throat> and there is a sense of needing to prepare, right? To get ready for a new energy that is coming. And I won't go into the details of this, but I highly recommend understanding your numerological personal year number. And that basically is calculated by adding the date of your birthday to the year 
no, I'm sorry, the day and the month of your birthday to the current year. And so every year that will shift and change. Me personally, I've been in a five, moving into a six. That will be a very different type of energy for you personally. It can also be helpful to know what we are in collectively, which is always fascinating for me because I am one year behind the collective. So for the collective, it'll be a seven year next year, which is very different from the six year that we just went through. So look at your your personal numerog numerological year number so that you know sort of what to anticipate. What are we, what are the shifts and changes that you're going to see energetically? And because part of this guidance that's coming through is to really get to know what, where you're at, what you're experiencing, what you need, what your intentions are. There's a, a strong recommendation of preparation, prepare for change. And so what do we think about when we're preparing to go on a trip, right? We we make a list of the things we might need. We make a list of the things that need to be done before we're gone or before we leave. We need to make a list of the things that need to be done while we're gone. We make a list of the things we need to take care of or the things we need to take with us, things we might need to purchase. So uh, what I'm getting really strongly right now is just this same similar energy of preparation for whatever shifts and changes are coming. And it's not that we need to... Um, to to know what's coming or that we need to you know contemplate or or ask for guidance on what's coming know that that will remain unseen until it is absolutely necessary for us to know apparently we're on a need to know basis um, but prepare as if you were going for a trip right wrap up all of the the loose ends of this past year get really clear on where you want to go whether it's physically emotionally mentally financially personally in your love life all of those things get really clear on what needs to be tied up so that you can move towards whatever intentions you have set. We need to reevaluate our priorities we Need to get really clear on what, what are, our, you know, I did a video recently on our core values, right? What are your core values? What do you value most? What are your highest priorities? Get really clear on where you're going, what your intentions are so that you can drive forward with clarity um, one of the, the best examples um, or the best experiences that I had in the corporate world was a branding initiative where we really took a look at what does this brand stand for, right? Who, and it was, I think I can say this, yes. Um, I think I won't, but it is a well-known brand, a very old, well-known brand. And to go in and to, to look at what was that brand known for? Why did people buy from them? And it became very clear that we were making product decisions. We we're going to add this new bell and whistle. We we're going to add this new fancy light. We we're going to spend more money on certain things that did not support the priorities of the brand, right? And so when you step back and you look at yourself as a brand, what are your priorities? Every decision you make from that place going forward has to support one of those priorities, right? So if this brand stood for high quality, reliability, right? The grandma had this product for a hundred years. And because that thing never died on her, she went out and got a new one because she knew she could count on that brand. That meant that the, the pretty fancy lights or the, the cool bells and whistles when the door to the machine was opened, that doesn't support why the customer buys. In fact, the money, the investment is better spent on a, a longer lasting engine or a longer lasting belt um, things of that nature, more durability it supports the reliability, the reason they come. So look at yourself and understand what are your top priorities? What, what drives the brand of you? And then every decision you make going forward, does that support one of those priorities? So again, a, a personal example, um, it, it takes a lot of energy to be a parent, especially a single parent. It takes a lot of energy to build a business while also doing that. It takes a lot of energy to be going through a master's while building a business, while being a single parent, right? So energy is extremely important. Those are my top three priorities. I need to make sure that I show up in the best possible way for my children, for my business, and for my my mission, right? The, the purpose that I've been given to, to help bring these, these necessary skills um, to schools and to my community, right? So every decision I make from there has to be in support of those initiatives. So if I choose to have a glass of wine 
on a Friday or Saturday night, I have to recognize that is a sacrifice that is taking away from the business. It's taking away from the kids. It's taking away from my energetic ability, right? So we have to understand if I spend money on a sports car, instead of investing it in the business, I am taking away from my priorities, right? So we need to get really clear, realign on our priorities, know what you're driving towards and, and cut away the excess fat is kind of what the, <laughs> the guidance is at the moment. Um, my sticky notes are curling up. So <laughs> I keep having to look up. Um, yeah. So recommit to whatever it's going to take to make these things happen. Right. So for me, we're going to cut out everything that, you know, from a, a physical standpoint, we're going to, um, recommit to a, a, a greater workout routine that creates more muscles. It creates more energy. We're going to reduce any remaining toxins. We're going to do a juice fast. We're going to do a cleanse. We're going to do some other things. You don't want to do a parasite cleanse, right? That's, that's a fun one. Um, but we're really going to get absolutely critically clear and, and optimize as best as we can, right? So recommit to whatever it takes. And it's interesting because a strong theme of impulse control has been coming through that, and it's, it's not, I'm not an impulsive person. I'm actually a pretty disciplined person, but there are things where you have the thought and you take the action and we haven't taken the time to ground in, get guidance and ask, is that really supportive of these priorities? Right? So instead of just acting on the impulse, taking the time to realign to the priorities and get clear, is this really something that we should be doing? Right. Rebalance and realign are a strong theme this week. Um, rebalancing as in cleansing, as reconnecting, as getting clear on priorities, right? Coming back to earth, being grounded, remembering who we were made to be instead of who we became because of society or the people that we engage with and, and, and getting really clear on this is the old version of me that was made by the world versus this is the new version of me that I was made to be. And I'm going to get absolutely critical in my discipline to cut out all of the excess fat, to remove any impulse um, decisions and, and maximize and optimize where we're going, right? It's time to kill the alter ego, right? Kill off that version of ourselves that is holding us back or that was made by someone else so that who we were made to be, who we were meant to be, who we are naturally, the truth of who we are can come forward, right? And we have to do this every day. Killing that alter ego happens every day in all of those decisions that you would have made because it used to be fun, or that's what my friends did, or that's what society told me I should do in every moment as we stop doing those things, as we make a better decision to, to realign to who we were made to be, we are killing off that alter ego every single day in many different decisions, right? So realign to your design. This is a fun rhyming phrase that's been coming through quite a bit. It's a realignment. And if you have experienced alignment to your true core nature, you understand what this means. That when we feel off kilter, we feel discombobbled, we feel disconnected, we feel depressed, we feel sad, we feel fearful, shame, guilt, any of those things, it's a misalignment. So in cutting out that excess fat and getting really disciplined, blend and getting clear on where we're going and getting clear on our priorities, we are realigning to the truth of who we are. We are realigning to our true design, right? Look at what's holding you back and know that there is a solution to every single problem without exception. It is a matter of the willingness to do what it takes, to get out there, to seek it. And please do not forget that there is always someone out there who has experienced and overcome the challenge that you are facing. And you can collapse time by finding that person and learning from how they overcame the challenge that you are facing. You may just need some new tips and tricks, some new tools in your toolbox. You may need a mentor. You may need someone that you can emulate, but know that trying to figure this out on your own or expecting yourself to do this alone is, is wasting time, wasting energy. It's not necessary when you can collapse time by aligning and calibrating to someone who has gone before you, right? Um, just remember that you are and become what you believe. So who you are right now is who you believe yourself to be. 
and those beliefs that's programming that came from likely someone else. And if you're not real crazy about who you are right now, then that's as simple as looking at that belief and the, the habit or the challenge, the roadblock that stands in the way of you becoming the version of you that you would be proud to be. And that is possible, especially with help, right? So look at your beliefs. What do you believe about yourself that you dislike? Because in the dislike, there is that, that evidence that it is untrue and that you can be the person that you desire to be. That desire is there for a reason, right? No more spiritual bypassing. It is time to knock it off. <laughs> no more excuses. No more laziness. That there is there is a need to balance guidance and action. That there is a need to balance rest and um, beast mode. <laughs> that there is a time for that, but it has to be balanced. That we are not made to be here to just meditate all day. That we are given talents, given gifts, given skills, given abilities, given dreams for a reason. And they will not let you rest. There is a part of you that knows that you are made for something more. And it's time to stop pretending that just because everything, nothing's terrible, right? We've done most of the healing. We're doing pretty good. I'm pretty comfortable. But notice and be honest with yourself that that level of comfort is, is a bit lackadaisical. And that, yes, it will take effort to move into the next level of your purpose. It will take discipline. It will take effort. It will take, in some cases, hard work. That's not a dirty word. That's not something we should be scared of or shy away from. If you truly are here to do something that matters, you're going to have to put in some effort. It's time to show up. No more playing small. No more hiding in the shadows under the guise of healing. It's time to be disciplined so that we can show up and bring about heaven on earth. <sighs> With that, I will close. That feels complete. I love you guys very much. Please do make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you know anybody who could benefit from this. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video. Take care. Namaste.